Ever since the beginning of multiplayer Minecraft, players have tried to find discrete locations in order to hide their bases. Most players will create bases a few hundred blocks from spawn, or create underground bases for extra protection. But on a server like 2B2T, players bring it to another level. From traveling over a million blocks to hide from griefers, and mining for weeks on end, this is the story of the first players and settlements beyond 1 million and how it changed base locations as a whole on the server. During the early age of exploration around August of 2011, a player named Amalimix came up with an idea to expand the nether highways to reach 1 million blocks in the overworld. During this time, the longest nether tunnel was the Plus X Tunnel, and the farthest it went was to 38,000 blocks. The idea behind this was not only to move further away from spawn to be safer from griefing, but believing that no one would ever go so far to walk 1 million blocks just to grief a base. Amalimix soon came in contact with others from a group who were at a base called Old Town. After explaining his ambitions, the group decided to join him since their last base Ravendell had been recently griefed. Together, the players Electroff, JDW9966, and Willy Roof joined Amalimix on the Plus X Highway. However, to reach 1 million, they would have some obstacles. At the time, enchantment tables didn't allow you to pick an enchantment, so they mainly used unenchanted pickaxes, which took the group a way longer time to mine. Soon after the group decided to start the dig, a player named the Judge Holden would follow as well. They would dig for weeks, however, Amalimix did most of the work. After 2-3 to three weeks of constant digging, Amalimix dug the tunnel to 125,000 blocks in the nether, which was 1 million blocks in the overworld. He dug away from the tunnel to the location which will become the first 1 million base on 2B2T. Not soon after, more players would arrive, even though around that time, take several hours of manually walking and eating since hack clients didn't have modules to automatically walk and eat yet. Some like the Judge Holden would later say that the walk would make players physically sick because they had to concentrate on walking in a straight line for so long and would occasionally have obstacles like turning around a corner, go up a spiral staircase, then walking miles through nothing, and then down and up spiral staircases again. Overall, it was an awful experience. The members started to create houses, and eventually more players would join. One of these players was Chris Layton, who was known as the self-proclaimed king of 2B2T, and one of the more notorious players that would grief and spam in chat. Some members in the group were a little skeptical inviting him, however, a greater threat was to worry about. Amalimix made a crucial mistake in inviting someone else along after he robbed duplicated items that belonged to another player named Shaogun. Amalimix invited a player named X0XP to the base, believing that he would not be interested in griefing the 1 million base and would be an interesting character. X0XP already made himself out to be one of the worst players on the server and having his own hack client. The players at the base were critical of inviting X0XP, however, they had no choice but to stay along and hope for the best. Soon after X0XP arrived, he would search around for the stolen TNT that Amalimix took, and after only a few hours and a few buildings yet made, all hell would break loose. With only 4 days of the base being founded, it was blown up massively with all of the TNT X0XP could find. Since X0XP was also using a speed hack, he was not easy to kill by anyone in the group. The group tried to kill him, but one by one they would all be killed. Some members would grab whatever they could find and flee to regroup. While x XP was still griefing, these members would stock up on the remaining armor they had and confront x XP. After launching a barrage of arrows at him, it seemed to work and x XP retreated. Soon an odyssey started with several temporary bases that would take over several months to avoid x XP and him griefing them again. Following this, Amalimix gave up on the group and went back to spawn since he blamed himself for not listening to the others and inviting x XP. After things settled down, a following base was created on a mushroom island. This base was called Profanity Island, or also known as Troll Island. It was used to stock up on food after the countless griefs by x XP. 
The group managed to meet here to plan out future bases and how to hide it from others. Some players like XY Spencer were invited and arrived shortly after. However, the Mushroom Island wasn't an ideal place for growing a lot of wheat, as the mycelium blocks would take over plotted land very fast. So the group decided to travel towards a jungle biome. They created a base in the jungle, and this location was soon a meeting ground for new players like Rick and Man and Royal McCook and the location was officially called Rapture. Around the same time, a player named Octopia, who was a friend of the group that was based at Old Town and Revendell, kept hearing about the struggles around the 1 million base and decided not to go, but stay at his base called the Rainbow Islands. He would also travel around Spawn and was far from ready to join the group at 1 million. However, he would make himself ready for the worst and started to stock up on the items for the non-avoidable travel. Along his journeys near spawn, he would target spawn killers who made it impossible for new players to get out. At some point, he met one spawn killer named Advanced who used a very fast speed hack. A normal player would be dead in seconds, but thanks to a lot of potions Octopia carried with him all the time, he could fight nearly on par with players who had hack clients. Octopia was able to flank him on ice and corner him in a cave, eventually managing to kill him. But after his small victory, Octopia was attacked by Police Mike 55. Most of the time, Police Mike 55 had the upper hand and had the high ground. However, Octopia slowly got up to his position, and after Police Mike started to get arrogant, Octopia knew he could use this to his advantage. He decided to splash a Strength 2 potion, and not soon after, the knockback on Octopia's sword sent Police Mike 55 flying into a deep spawn hole and leaving behind a big stack of loot. Police Mike 55 had some rare endstone blocks and a black disc record that Octopia has to this day. Octopia would later say this was his hardest battle yet. Octopia decided that he should get ready to travel to the 1 million base to be with his old friends again. Meanwhile, at Rapture, more players would arrive. These players were Marsman77, who was from Old Town, and more friends of Electroff and Willy Roof, including the player Pylon123, who would travel with the bare minimum of leather armor, wooden tools, and melons as food, and was happy to finally make it. Rapture would expand and become a big base for a period of time. However, another threat would harm the base and make the group decide to leave it behind. A new Minecraft update was introduced, which added thunder and lightning. It would be a disaster for all buildings made out of wood, or bases near a forest. The first lightning storm would make the group realize that staying at Rapture was too much of a problem, and they also decided to kick Royal McCook from the group along the way. There were a couple of reasons why he was kicked. The base members liked him, but towards the end he would start acting weird. He would pretty much do nothing other than saying nonsense in chats and randomly attack base members on the roads. When Chris Layton filled his house with dirt as a prank, Royal was furious and lead the coordinates of the base. When he was kicked from the group, Royal swore he would follow them and grief their next base as revenge. The group decided to travel into a new type of large underwater biome and built a base called Rapture 2. This base would resemble a game called Bioshock, since around this time the game was popular with the Judge Holden and many others. The entrance of the underwater base was a resemblance of the iconic light tower entrance in Bioshock. The outcome was quite impressive, with several large rooms underwater, but soon this space would also be doomed. Amalimix followed them and leaked the base to Pop Bob. One by one, everyone at the base would be killed by Pop Bob. But the Judge Holden was able to escape using a new hack module that JDW discovered and flew away. This was the hardest time for the group as several players were on their track constantly. Pop Bob, Police Mike 55, Royal McCook, and X0XP continued to search for them as they were dedicated to make it impossible to base around 1 million. Passy05 would meet up with the Judge Holden, and they would settle down in a snow biome, weary and tired of being hunted all the time. This space would later be called Snowtown, and was a hasty construction of a big wall and some small houses inside. The group would eventually use an exploit that would be very important for the next two years. This exploit allowed a player to glitch on the nether roof and travel far without any danger. JDW99666 and Electroff decided to make a gas-proof station on the nether roof at the coordinates of Snowtown. 
Autopia decided to follow his friends after nearly half a year and do the journey to their base as it was easier than ever. He took his most valuable items and glitched himself on top of the nether roof with the help of a ladder and a door. The walk was less complicated compared to a tunnel, and eventually he was greeted by JDW on the nether roof. As Autopia entered Snowtown, he was very disappointed. The whole town was covered in snow, and felt like it was abandoned. The Judge Holden decided that the place was way too small, so he built a tower further away from the base. Also around this time, Chris Layton was mobbed out of 2B2T after Popov found his Facebook page and tried to destroy his reputation among his real-life school friends. Autopia decided to do the same as the Judge Holden and built a cobblestone castle further away from Snowtown in the style of a lava cast. After Autopia finished his castle, he decided to improve the situation at Snowtown and smelted sand to make a lot of glass to make a rooftop over the town. Soon Autopia got help with Willy Roof to build a sand duper, which would help getting glass and sandstone a lot faster. After the glass roof was complete and all of the snow was removed, Autopia created a jungle and mushroom biome inside Snowtown and built his own personal houses. Soon the group realized that the base was improved and came back to play again. Even though the base was improving, the group discussed moving further out since the new Minecraft updates would upgrade villagers and they could build a larger base. A few more towers would be added, like the Netherwart farm and a floating island by a player named Rainbow Cats near the Snowblock Tower. During this relatively peaceful time, they also created a giant railroad on the nether roof that would go 15,000 blocks out to a new location with the help of a rail duper. While Autopia already had two of his main Minecraft accounts at Snowtown, he also kept two other accounts close to spawn to continue helping new players. One of these new players was Levy12, who Autopia thought would be a good addition to Snowtown, but long story short, he wasn't. After only three days at the base, he began to annoy the members for pranks, and after several members complained about his actions, Autopia removed his bed and killed him back to spawn. Thankfully for the group, Levy12 forgot the coordinates of Snowtown, and Autopia quickly realized how lucky he was when Levy12 openly invited players to his base and publicly posted the coordinates in chat. One day, Cytotoxic T Cell got Popbop to send her his hack client. She didn't want to install and use it without a test run, so she would send it to Autopia, and Autopia would send it to Levy12 on one of his alternate accounts. Autopia would tell Levy12 that it was the best hack client ever. But when Levy12 installed the client, it completely ruined his computer. Not soon after, Levy12 would leave 2B2T forever. To commemorate Levy12, Autopia and the group built a grave for him at Snowtown and put his armor and some bones into it, with a sign making fun of him. Another player would join the group. This player was Dr. Motek and was one of the best builders and friends Autopia had on 2B2T. Autopia met Dr. Motek when he was at spawn and was already traveling back with another account and happened to find Dr. Motek asking for food and chat. Autopia gave him some bread and some advice to go far out if he were to establish a base. Dr. Motek would message Autopia two weeks later, inviting him to his base, which would later be known as Dr. Motek Base, and would also be the location where Autopia would invite XCC2 and Cytotoxic T Cell and establish a connection to Imtown, but that's a story for another time. After the group finished the railway on the nether roof, they moved directly to a village and decided to call it New M. Soon the group set up small houses for the remaining members, which were Electroff, JDW99666, Willy Roof, Marshman77, The Judge Holden, Flyon123, Rick and Man, and Rainbow Cats. Willy Roof built a newer, larger sand duper, and Autopia welcomed Dr. Motek to the base a few weeks later. Autopia built the majority of the larger structures in the main area, including the sheep farm and the netherrack pagoda. Willy Roof would begin building his floating automatic farm and place his dog Wolfie inside. Marshman 77 would put his floating castle next to it, and Autopia started several underwater places connecting the builds together. Autopia's largest project yet would become the flying sandstone structure next to the coastline of New M, and some players like Rainbow Cats helped him farm sandstone from the sand duper. The structure was planned to look like the Laputa Castle from the anime, Laputa Castle in the Sky. However, it was never finished. 
One day, Optopia would post screenshots of the castle and chat, and a player named Imperator Terai would start asking Optopia about the sand and Real Duper. After becoming friends, Imperator Terai asked Optopia to join Imptown, and he would on his third Minecraft account. New M itself would at some point stagnate and see less and less players log in naturally. Most times there would only be three players, then only two, and then mostly one. Signs on the message board would call out for more activity again, but would fail at the end. A last project was to use the rail duper and build a castle made out of diamond blocks, but was unfinished. The Judge Holden will go back to spawn to build there again, and JDW99666 will also go back to spawn to fight and kill the first Ender Dragon on 2B2T. Rickman Man will also leave and will later place the first Wither at spawn. Willy Roof and Marksman77 will later return in 2016 and help with construction of the drain. Snowtown and New M would still be around when Autopia returned in January of 2016. Both bases were griefed by new players a few weeks later. After a YouTuber named The Camping Rusher visited the server, Willy Roof's automated sky farm was not griefed, allowing him to retrieve his dog, who was at the time the oldest dog on 2B2T. Snowtown and New M will be among Autopia's favorite personal bases, serving as an example that no matter how large your project is or how difficult it is to complete, it is always possible on a server like 2B2T.